message for you today, a good old Mother's Day message. And um, I believe it's going to bless y'all. Did y'all enjoy the message last week? Yeah. Amen. And I had an opportunity to do a Q&A with the P31, which was, it, it was good. That was fun, wasn't it? Yeah. Amen. So we thank God for that opportunity. And there was so many women we have here. And I just thank God for all of y'all being here. This is a good, good church. Look at somebody and say, this is a good church. Yeah. Amen. That's... Look at them and say, that's why I'm here. Nobody want to be at a bad church. Amen. AdamandBeliever.com forward slash look at a mother and say, mother, they lied to you. They lied to you. Amen. All right. So we're going to talk about these lies. If, if that's all right. Let me have. Amen. This is a Mother's Day's message. AdamantBeliever.com. Mother, they lied to you. Dot PDF. All right. D did it come up? Okay. All right. We're going to jump right into this. John 10 and 10 tells us the thief cometh not but for to kill, I mean to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But I am come that they might have life and that they might have it more abundantly. Do you know what it means to steal, kill, and destroy? That's somebody that's really out to get you. You would think stealing is bad enough and you know killing, that's it. But they don't want to just kill. They want your lineage. The enemy wants your legacy. He wants your children. He wants your marriage. Amen. Now, when I'm talking to mothers, I'm talking to all mothers. Amen. Whether you married or not or whatever happened, I don't know. But all mothers, the thief cometh to steal, kill, and to destroy. So he's going to come. He wants to kill you. Steal your abilities and destroy your home. That's what he wants to do. So the devil has used our world and society to totally cripple the way people view motherhood. It's skewed and distorted. Even in the court system, the courts are it's like it's automatic that the children go to the father. I mean, go to the mother and don't need a father. They pass judgment as if a child does not need a father. But God created a formula. And look at somebody and say, his formula works. Amen. Attacking motherhood. It's the best way to destroy the morality of a culture. If you want to destroy a culture, attack motherhood. Yeah. Y'all still here? Yeah. Psalms 31 and 28 tells us, Her children arise up and call her blessed. Her husband also, and he praiseth her. This is what a mother's supposed to look like. Amen. Not this picture. <laughs> but this passage. This is Proverbs 31. Y'all call yourself P31. Your children ought to arise up and call you blessed and your husband also and praise you for the job you are doing. You know what this passage tells me? That society can't grade mothers. The children and the husband grades the mother. Society can say you're failing, but the children and the husband can say you're passing. So no matter what it looks like in the world, you are graded by your home. 
When mothers are not focused on their God-given purpose, this woman ain't focused at all. She's doing yoga. She's in the lotus position, worshiping demons, and the baby just want to be held. Yeah, but when mothers are not focused on their God-given purpose, they neglect to nurture their homes and pass on moral virtues to their children. See, I get it. The man is the head. He's the priest of the home. But the mother passes on moral virtues to the children. I can't get an amen on that. And that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, the, the man can be spiritual to where the spirit is dripping off his hands. But if the, if the mother is carnal, she's going to pass on carnal virtues. She's going to pass her carnality on to the children because she's closer to them when rearing them. Amen. That's okay. That's okay. Yeah, so if she's worldly, the children are going to be worldly. If she's drinking, children going to drink. Amen. Yeah. Yeah. So she's passing on moral virtue. This causes the children to be more vulnerable to societal ills and moral decay when the mother is not in her rightful place. This also causes fathers. Listen, it affects the fathers too. Yeah, the men are the head of the house, but it affects the fathers when the mother is out of order because it causes fathers to lack help meet support. <laughs> Amen. If you're in a marriage, you're more than a mother. You're more help meet than you are a mother. <laughs> I can't get eight mans in here. You, you what you started out being, you don't stop being a help meet. Amen. They always say behind every good man is a good woman. That's if she's in her place. That's if she's doing what God <laughs> wanted to do. I know a lot of great men that got women behind them and they ain't. Amen. Because they're interested in other things. Society has pulled their affections out of the home. And into the world. So this causes fathers to lack help meet support. Resulting in emotional and mental struggles in the men. Y'all don't think men can have emotional and mental struggles? You think Ahab had mental and emotional struggles? Bible said there wasn't nobody like him. No one like him because who was he married to? And the Bible said there was nobody like him because Jezebel, his wife, stirred him up. Well, he let her. I don't think you can stop Jezebel. She didn't need nobody to let her. <laughs> Jezebel, when Baal is in your name, you got some problems. You should have, amen. When you was at the altar and figured that out, you should have said, well, you know, maybe we shouldn't do this. If Baal, that's what her name means, daughter of Baal. Can I keep preaching to the mothers today? Y'all receiving this? Amen. Father's Day is coming. If we're going to even it out, we'll even out the score. Equal opportunity. Y'all know how I am. Amen. Romans tells us to be not conformed to what? This world. Why? Because all that is in the world is the what? Lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, the pride of life. If you're conformed to this world, you're conformed to those three things. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, pride of life. So let me, let, me, let me say it for the mothers. The lust of the flesh. Mothers, the lust to look lustful. 
having your body tight. See, when you overly concerned about your figure, you want somebody to see your results. There's nothing wrong with getting in shape and being healthy. But everybody shouldn't be taking a peek. You should be doing it so you can live longer and not be fine longer. Amen. Because once you start chasing fine, you're going to get older and fine is no longer possible. According to the world standards. Then what are you going to do? Be envious. Be depressed. Take it out on your husband. Bind him blinders. So he can't look to the left or the right. It's your father's day gift. Some old blind. <laughs> I know I'm preaching and y'all know I'm telling the truth. Yeah, so the Bible tells us. Lust of the flesh, lust of the eye, looking at what you want and what others have and comparing what you have to what others have. And then the pride of life, man, once pride is in there and you think you're something that you're not, you're hard to reach. These are the things that set in when you are conformed to the world. So the Bible says, be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. The devil has rigged our society to make mothers insecure. That's it. That's all he had to do. If he can make mothers, I'm talking to the mothers today. Amen. I'm talking to the not mothers yet. You better listen to this message too. But if he can make mothers insecure, he's then he can control you. Insecurity comes when you are not sure of your purpose and you are motivated by the opinion of others. Society can control you if you are insecure because insecurity makes you do things to please others or impress others for approval instead of following what is right according to God's plan. So an insecure person is going to do what society is telling them to do. You don't have the security to go against society. My prayer before the Lord all my life has been keep me secure. Because I got to preach uphill all the time against the flow of society. And if I'm insecure, I'm going to worry about what people think of me. So I won't say certain things. So I say, God, make me secure. Surround me with security so that I am not afraid to go against society. Amen. And women, you got to be the same way. Mothers, you definitely have to be this way. Secure enough in what you're doing and who you are to not allow society to make you feel a way about your decisions. You made a decision to homeschool your children, you got to be secure. You got to be secure when Thanksgiving comes. And y'all sitting around the table. Because them baby boomers, they don't like that homeschooling talk. They call that cultish. You know, black folks call stuff a cult when they don't understand. When they don't understand, it's a cult. You know, they come up with some ridiculous comebacks too. Well, what, how they going to know other kids? Well, we, we have some other kids here. Well, they need to be around other kids. Why? If other kids crazy, I don't want them around them. What's wrong with that? So they gonna just grow up with no kids around. Well, we got about 300 and something in here. Yeah, but if those 300 ain't around nobody that's not homeschooling then, what are they? I mean, what kind of, just hush, you're wrong. You're just wrong wrong when I finish my mashed potatoes and this turkey wing I'm getting up from here amen 
But you got to be secure. Say, well, no, this is the decision we feel God has led our home. And you know, when you bring God in it, it's that, okay then, all right then. Okay. okay. And I hate that okay with the question mark because that means it's, just, it's not going to end well. Okay. okay. Oh, my hand's off. My hand's off. Yeah, till tomorrow. Till you watch the Selma... Alabama documentary we marched to get in these schools they wouldn't let us in these schools I wish they wouldn't let us in them now cause they all crazy now teachers packing guns and rifles now kids 5th grade with facial hair shaving in the bathroom tattoos pierced all up Boys with cornrows. They already look like they've been arrested. Got to use baby, got to use baby cuffs to arrest them. <laughs> Play school cuffs. <laughs> we just getting you ready because. Yeah, but the devil rigged our society to make mothers insecure. And you're insecure when you're worried about what people think. Only God's plan. Look at somebody say, only God's plan. Only God's plan. Will satisfy who you are. Who you are. Only God's plan. Amen. Amen. But if you deviate from it, you will be insecure and feel inferior. It's basically whatever God created you, the, your manufacturer factorer made you for a certain task. So you will be able to do a certain thing. When you deviate from that, you fail at doing that thing. When you fail at doing that thing, you're not secure. Because you're not operating in the thing that you were created to do. Does that make sense? If this clicker I'm using, stop clicking. And start playing music when I hit the button. It failed at what it was created to do. It's no good. It's broken. It's defective. Amen. So society fights to get you to that place. Because they know once you're there, once you start questioning yourself, why am I here? What am I doing? He, the devil, that's when he comes and answers you. God's answers no longer work because God requires you to function the way he created you to because he's your manufacturer amen. amen amen so when you have a child guess what mother you're a mother before everything no oh, I didn't get a mother to clap at that amen somebody's a mother and still posting fine pictures online you're not fine anymore you're a mother your children don't need to see you putting your butt on the internet no more they gotta go to school and talk to other kids I saw your mama here she is on my phone right look at ooh your mama hot ooh your mama banging what's the words they use all the new words I, you know I'm old I don't know none of them your mama what I don't know Your mama fire, yeah, she gonna be in fire. She keep posting them pictures. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah, that's embarrassing the kids. You're not fine anymore if you're a mother. Stop. Nope, you're just not. Yeah, I'm canceling it now. You know how the world cancels stuff? I'm canceling your fineness. You ain't fine no more. It's over. I'm telling the truth. I don't care. I, yeah, hey. Amen. And I'm saying that because you shouldn't be looking at yourself like that. Kids in there just struggling because all of their affection you're putting on yourself. 
Amen. So what are kids going to do? They're going to go outsource them some affection. No matter how young they are. Maybe I need to come preach over here. You listening, Booker? Okay, okay. Because I tell you, ah, man, this is a tough message, boy. Amen. Well, somebody is mad because I said they wasn't fine. Now, I usually agree with what the word. I usually agree. They going to get in the car. Watch them, watch them, men. Watch, watch them, daddies. I usually agree with what the word says. Usually, pastor is on it. But today, he ain't seen my pictures. And I don't want to see your pictures, and I shouldn't see them, and nobody should see that. Amen. You ain't got to come in here and hug you. You all exposed online and coming in. How you doing, sis? <laughs> I'm seeing too much. Amen. We got to get on the altar after. Doesn't seem too much. Too many men in here for you to be doing that. Amen. Look at all these men in here. You know what you're doing. Friends with everybody. Wait till you friends with everybody. Now you in the gym. I know I'm preaching and that's okay. Amen. Look at somebody and say, you ain't fine. No, I'm just playing. Don't say that. <laughs> It's over. Look at him and say, it's over. <laughs> Mother, it's over. That's what I should have named this. That's a shirt, ain't it? That's a shirt. What company made that? My goodness. You know that's a female owned company Colossians tell us Wives submit yourselves unto who? Your own. your own husband As it is fit in the Lord So you don't submit yourself to me You submit yourself to your own husband Now we're submitted in here to get the word But I will never put you in the position To require you to submit to me Because I don't operate that way Amen. If you're having a problem, I'm going to send you either to my wife. I may try to help you if it's something I can deal with. But I'm going to make sure you respect the Lord of your home. That's what I do. Amen. Don't do that, man. No, no. Submit yourself to your own husband as it is fit in the Lord. Submission to a man is never trusted. When a woman is insecure. I'm going to say that again. Submission to a man. When you got that wound from that rejection. Remember what I talked about last week? You got that wound of rejection. And that wound caused you to be insecure. You can't trust submission. Amen. You're going to either run over him. Or run away from him. Because you don't trust it if you're insecure. You don't trust submission. Right. Feels like weakness when you're insecure. <laughs> so it always comes across as dominance or inferiority when a woman struggles with insecurity. You don't know how to receive or even understand male leadership and authority. Makes you feel away. Yeah. Yeah. Reminds you that can't nobody tell you what to do when you're insecure. Yeah. This is why our society wants all mothers insecure. She will not submit to her husband, which causes her children to have a distorted understanding of how the family functions. So now your children done got married. And you, the children don't, don't even know who's supposed to be leading the marriage because of what they grew up seeing. They grew up seeing your insecurity challenge every decision that their father made. Sassing him and 
you know. <laughs> Rolling your eyes and he come in and you know, I, I, you, everything all right? <sighs> Kids sat there and saw that and they like, wow. But that's insecurity. You feel like you have to do that so he won't leave you. You know that? Some women do that. They like try to dominate their man to make sure he stay there. That's a real thing. Yeah. Especially when they not feel they're not fine no more. Now you just beat him down, make him submit. So he'll always be there. I did, hey, because it's the truth. I've seen it. I've talked to folks that do this. Yeah, it's a thing. Some cultures, it's real strong. Real strong in some cultures. Yeah, that dominating woman. Yeah, African culture, oh my gosh. Yeah, it's real strong. Hispanic culture is the strongest. I'm just telling you the truth. Look, it's getting quiet. You better clap, Mexicans. <laughs> you know I ain't politically correct. I talk about everybody. But it's the truth. It's the truth. It's, it, it is the truth. And that comes from just upbringings. The men are dominated by the women to hold the men in a certain place of submission because the women are insecure. Well, let me move on since it's getting real quiet in here. I, I, hey, I just got to give it. Father's, look at somebody say, Father's Day is coming. Okay, we gonna, Father's Day will be here soon. Amen. But this is the truth. And when you do this, your children just don't know what to do. They don't understand. They don't understand. And so, typically, the daughters become very tenacious and excel. And the boys become very passive and fail. Jezebel destroys all men no matter what generation it is husband or the son let me move on that was what I was say. baby daddy out of wedlock births divorcees Jezebel attitudes destroy the concept of family in children and cause them to not desire the bible or God's way after seeing it totally ineffective in the parents' decision-making. Why would a kid want church and the gospel when it's totally ineffective in their parents' decision-making? Their parents are saying that they filled with the Holy, saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost and that with the burning fire. But all of their decisions are carnal, secular, and stupid. So the child is like, okay, where is this Holy Ghost filledness? And if that's what the Holy Ghost does, I don't want it. Yeah. You in a house and your mama want to be a boss lady? You just went against the Bible. Look at that. It got quiet. It, it got it got quiet. Yeah. You, all, you, you trying to be a boss. That's not in the scripture. So the kids are wondering, okay. I'm not saying success. That don't mean you're a boss. Hey, Amen. You can have success. You can be financially successful, whatever, the, whatever it is. But you're not 
leaving your children's upbringing to questions just so you can go and achieve things. You're still being the mother God has called you to be for your children. They're not getting neglected. Kicked to the curb. Forgotten. Left to fend for themselves. Can I keep preaching in this house? Amen. Well, yeah, this is some women. They just, I said, when you see a man, let's go. I mean, it's just competition. And that can come from trauma. If you've been hurt by a man, if you were disappointed by a man, let down, if you were uh, uh, assaulted by a man, or if, you know, whatever, abused by a man. In your upbringing, you can see men as the enemy. Well, the saddest thing is most women like that end up getting married. But they look for a man they know they can dominate. And we're back at that. Yeah, they look for a man that they can dominate and put the foot in his neck. Then when he want to go to G. Craig's church, they got to get him out of here, Marshall. Get him out of here. Let me out. They don't want to be in here. Because, man, he getting, man, he's getting empowered. He's getting stronger. One day he might stand up to me. And we got to get him out of here. Oh, that's happened before on numerous occasions. Get him away. Yeah. But that's because of that wound got infected and it got infected. And now you see men as something you need to challenge. And a lot of women never get married because during the courtship, you challenging him. Yeah. During the courtship, let's go play basketball. And you know, you used to be a WNBA. You was a point guard for the Sparks. Just want to win something. Just... Let's race. You got newspaper clippings how you won state and county and everything. Got trophies and ribbons. Let's race. <laughs> then you smoke him. And then wonder why he don't like you no more. You supposed to let him win. What you really supposed to do is start off running and fall and let him. Oh, oh, you okay? Dum dum da dum, dum dum da dum. You know, it's like a cartoon. His eyes. Dum dum da dum. It's done. <laughs> they don't know. They don't know. Elder, we gotta teach them. We the old people now. Hey, Amen. Hey, Amen. Hey, you know, I found out I was old the other day. I'm telling you, that's when I found out I was really old. Older. Well, no, I was old. <laughs> Reggie sent me his wedding picture with Redetta 23 years ago. And, you know, 20, oh, today, congratulations. So, Sabatha was in their wedding, and I was there, and the pictures got that old yellowy film on it. So, you know, when you see your parents' pictures, you be like, man, where was this? I saw that picture, I was like, oh my God. Now I'm the wind was this. It hit me. So that's when I realized, Jay Brown, I done been here a minute. So you better listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Amen. Good gracious. And my mama, I was telling her, she was like, ooh, y'all old? My mama just said that this morning. Hey. First John 2, <laughs> for all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eye, and the pride of life is what? Not of the Father. Not of the Father. Not of the Father. These are the things that you, see people, don't ask me what should you be praying. As a mother, you make sure you pray this. God, get the lust of the flesh out of my, out of my life, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, the things that are not of the Father, I don't want in me. Amen. Pray this passage. 
And the next one say, uh, goes even in depth even more. So just read this, man. Read this First John 2. It'll help you so that you can, you know, you can't be on social media all day and not have the lust of the eye, the pride of life, lust of the flesh, because that's all it is. Amen. Amen. And we don't care about nothing being cultural, man. We done broke all kind of curses in this church. I don't care what your bloodline said. I don't care what your nationality said. That's why we don't even believe in all that old color stuff. Because we know that God can break it. And we in here breaking it so that our children don't have to go through it. So receive instruction in here. Amen. But he said, none of this stuff is of the father, but it's of the world. They made you insecure, mothers, by taking away what gives you purpose. And then repurposing you to compete with men. So they took away the concept of being a helpmeet. Totally destroyed it, our society. Now that sounds weak, sounds old, sounds archaic, sounds outdated. Help me. So I'm just supposed to sit around and help. Yeah, that's the way it's looked at now. I'm just supposed to sit around. All, everything is I'm just supposed to sit around. Amen. But no, that's repurposing. In other words, putting you against men. They're repurposing you to make you compete with men. Now, men and women aren't created equal. We're not made out of the same stuff. Man was made out of the dust of the earth. Woman was made out of the rib of the man. So how can we be the same and compete when we're not even made the same? Uh, see, yeah, we're, to we're made totally different. That's that feminist movement. Those pictures I showed you in the beginning, all of those are feminist. They're the world's top feminists leading the feminist movement. All of them. And they got some of y'all. Some of y'all got their albums and stuff. Yeah, you know, folk in here, I, I've learned. Some folk in here going to listen to it regardless of what I say. But be the first one filling up the basket out there with prayer requests. I ain't praying for you if you're going to listen to Taylor Swift. <laughs> Taylor Swift practices witchcraft. There's only one way to the top. Don't make me preach the truth. I, I see. And But some folk in here, they're going to take their daughter to the concert. They're going to, you know. Yeah, that's what they do. But they made you insecure by taking away what gives you purpose and then repurposing you to compete with men. Being sanctified is out and being alluring and sexually empowered is in. No more sanctified. No more women that cover themselves confidently. Now they gotta be alluring, sexually empowered. That's in. Natural beauty is out and augmentations, enhancements, and modifications are in. BBLs and BBC and BET, all that's in. <laughs> yeah, just whatever. Whatever you got on the shelf, inject that. Yeah. Yeah. I need my lips bigger. I need my chin reset. <laughs> hey, you, they see a movie star, somebody in a movie. Oh, yeah, I want that chin. Then give me her ears. <laughs> then I need her, <laughs> her butt. And then her shoulder. I want her shoulders. You, you ain't even you don't know who you are a quiet spirit oh oh 
Oh! Which camera is on? Turn Kevin's camera on. Switch it in the back. Who's switching? Rob, switch it to Kevin's camera. <laughs> A quiet spirit. A quiet spirit. Do you know a woman is supposed to have a quiet spirit? I, I, hey. Some folks never heard that before. You need to be able to get quiet when it's time to listen. I'm not talking about at work. I'm not talking about in here. I'm talking about at home. Ooh, ooh. I might have to take this coat off. It got hot all of a sudden. Somebody ain't liking this. You want to be P31. You P2. If you can't receive this word, quit coming. Quit coming to P31. You ain't going to make it. A quiet spirit. Because an argumentative spirit is not submission. And argue... That's the devil. A quiet spirit. Class. Class. Classy. Classy. You know what a classy woman is? She's more concerned about her inside than her outside. That's class. A quiet spirit. I'm back on that. <laughs> class and virtue is out, but being boisterous, outspoken, loud, rude, and bossy is in. Women that cannot be corrected. That's insecurity. You can't be corrected because you feel if he corrects you, you're beneath him. That means you're not secure in who God made you to be. Oh, you, oh, you couldn't have lived in the Old Testament. You better be glad you skipped the Bible days. <laughs> you wouldn't have been able to make it. Hey, man, you wouldn't have even had a choice of who you married. They didn't give you no choice because they know marriage is relative. What does that mean? That means that all your, oh, I'm not attracted to him. That's worldly. That didn't come from God. People you say you're attracted to, none of that came from God. That's not my type. That's not God. All of those are, all, hey, those are monikers from the world. And that's why you ain't got nobody. Yeah, and you won't have nobody. That ain't my type. That ain't my type. Blah, 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 blah. No, no, no. In the Bible days, they say, hey, come here, girl. They ask them, they say, you a virgin? Okay, come on. Where am I going? I got this son over here that need a wife. And they took you to his house. And then you got with him, and you fell in love because love is relative. It's not absolute. It's completely relative. You can fall in love with a snake. You spend too much time with it. Yeah, whoever you spend time with, that's who you're going to fall in love with. Yeah, your type changes with time if you spend time. I know I'm preaching. I'm walking heavy in here. Boy, Gerard, he would have... the way it was in the Bible day. Now women got all these. He got to be this. He got to have this. He got to drive this. He got to do this. He got to be this. He got to be this. Okay. Sit over there single. Yeah. The men are worse. She got to have this. She got to do this. She got to she gotta come to the table with something. Come to the table with something? You're supposed to be the table. 
if you a real man, what we talking about? Come to the table. Boy. Just loud and bossy. Just argumentative. Just talk it, talk it, talk it. And, th and that's made men weak. Men, they don't have the fortitude to just go get a wife. And that's all this surveying. Yeah, men used to have the confidence to just, that one. Remember them days? That one. Now, let me go get to Noah. What? No, I need to get to Noah. I need to check her page. I need to just, that one. But all of this, man, changed it. Can I keep preaching in here? Being led by man is out and leading, dominating, overpowering, beating up, and competing with men is in. Competition. Men are competition now. They knew that. They knew if they raised the insecurity level in women, they would be too insecure to trust masculinity. Some of them would rather have a stud than a man. Turn the woman into a man. Do all the stuff that a man would do. But don't want a man. Man, I'm preaching in this place. Oh, gosh. Oh, you ain't fine. I told you. That mirror ain't, is speaking in tongues. Proverbs 7 and 25. <laughs> let not thine heart, listen. Solomon said, let not thine heart decline to her ways. Go not astray in her paths. For she hath cast down many wounded. Who is this? It's the man eater. The female that's insecure. So she takes men down. He's saying, decline to go where she's going. Don't go where she's going. For she has cast down many wounded. Yea, many strong men have been slain by her. Strong men? Strong men. Her house is the way to hell. Going down to the chambers of death. She will mess you up. Amen. Quit inboxing her. Quit chatting with her. Quit emailing her. She will take you to hell. They keep you insecure by flaunting perfect bodies, riches, accomplishments online to show you what you do not have and cannot be. You keep scrolling, looking at them bodies. The minute you look in the mirror, you say, you know what? It is over. Pastor was right. You can't look like that. All them filters and junk, all them injections and fake junk. You believe in what you see? You in the gym just about to kill yourself on the treadmill. Ah, ah, I got to look like that picture I saw. Ah, ah. <laughs> you can run on that treadmill. You can run out this atmosphere on that treadmill. And you ain't going to look like that picture. You saw. You can run till you sand your legs down to your knees. You just knee nubs on the treadmill. You will not look like that picture. And that's the wrong motivation anyway. Only reason you should be in the gym is to be healthier. Live long. 
feel good about yourself not compared to anyone else. If your husband like it, that should be all that matters. All that matters. Amen. And if he don't like it, make him like it. You don't know how to do that no more? <laughs> Told the women the other day, man, you ain't a woman. That's a man. Being constantly exposed to images, videos, and content that make you envious, jealous, and insecure will make you forsake the opinion of one for the applause of many in order to feel accepted and affirmed. The perfect body has been redefined by society and not God. Nowadays, to age and lose youthfulness as a mother is feared and looked down upon. You're a mother. Why you got a problem aging? Your wealth should not be in your beauty, your body, your shape. No. It's in your God-given role. That's where your approval is. Can you look up on your house and see God's hand? Can you look up on your husband and see him blessed? Can he look up on you and thank God he's blessed? Can your children, that, those are the things that matter. But once you start looking at your body and your face and your shape and all of that, you're gonna get old. And then where are you gonna look at? Young, younger, proactive, scantily clad women are constantly promoted to cause mothers to hate themselves and their bodies. That's why they promote it. They don't promote it on that just to lure men. They put all that online to make women insecure. <laughs> you keep watching what you not and see how it makes you feel over time. It's there to make you insecure. Because once you're insecure, they can control you. Then pornography, only fans, and all that cause men of all ages to desire fantasy over reality. And thus, it causes mothers to be even more insecure about themselves in a marriage. Because all the options the man got online. Now you going through his phone and checking his computer history and Yeah. Can I keep? Yeah. Insecure. If he can make you insecure. Woo. Now, now that's more than Botox. That's some augmentation. They look like monsters. All of them. All of them look like comic book vil villains. <laughs> yeah, that's is what we do. I got the Kardashian and Nicki Minaj on there because they're bodies. They went and got BBLs and made all the girls want it, then took theirs out. But see, they have the million dollar injections. You went and got the Big T Bazaar. They put Elmer's glue in you. Just whatever, whatever was on sale at CVS, that's what they put in you. <laughs> yeah, so they could just take theirs out. You can't take yours out. Yours doesn't move to the front. <laughs> Every time you sit down, it moves. This is terrible. And I find more. Oh, this is this. Check this scripture out. 
And I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares and nets. I find more bitter than death the woman whose heart is snares. What are snares? Traps. You're looking to trap somebody. And her hands are bands. Whoever pleases God shall escape her. But the sinner shall be what? Taken by her. That's what the internet, that's, that's what porn, that's what all of that is. Women whose hearts are snares and nets. Yeah, and that's why you augment your face. You're doing that because you want people to find you attractive. You're not going to augment your face like that if you don't think it needs it. And, and why do you think you need Yeah, I got a preacher on here. She's a preacher. Why are you worried about your face? And you preaching. Because she's been out of order since day one. That's why. If you ain't in your purpose, you out of order. Gracefulness as you mature should be celebrated and revered. But it's shunned today because society has promoted the wrong images and concepts of motherhood. Mothers augment and disguise themselves for sensual power of influence to deal with their insecurity. So basically, if I can't look good, I will still get looks. Proverbs 31, we back at Proverbs 30, 31. P31. Oh, I see, I don't hear it now. It done got quiet in the P31. Hey, I'm a, you, I'm a P12. Uh, when you say P12, I'll, I'll yell. <laughs> this message, you just getting busted down. You're going to be negative after a while. I'm Psalms. I'm Psalms 150. You done went, you just done put <laughs> backed up into another book. Let's just get let's just get out of Proverbs. Let's <laughs> Favor is deceitful and beauty is vain. But a woman that feareth the Lord, she shall what? Be praised. When mothers are overly self-conscious, they are not able to properly nurture their homes. So if you're overly worried, if you worry too much about your appearance, you can't nurture your home because you need attention. Your home is taking attention away from you. You need attention to validate your appearance. You should be calling your children beautiful. Amen. You should be telling your husband he look good. But if you need it all the time, somebody need to look at me, then it's hard for you to nurture your home. When their focus is superfluity, then mothers are not in their, on their post and outside of their purpose. This opens the door for sin to come in and overtake their children and then cause the strong man to be tempted to sin as well. Yep. Queen. This is what happens. You see what's happening behind the queen? Whenever you take your queen status... You're going to burn the house down. Proverbs 31. Give her of the fruit of her hands and let what? Your works are supposed to praise you in the gates. Not just any works. Your creation role works. What God created you to do. Don't be more successful in the world than you are in the house. That's forbidden. When mothers put career aspirations, material things, or their own vanity above their creation role, their home will struggle to birth the right spirit in their children. Or they may not get a functional family at all. This is exactly what the devil wants, 
and why society is pushing this agenda. If the women are out of order, the home will fall apart. Amen. Amen. This is the scripture that they really don't like me for, Elder. Because they, you, some folks said, you just own the women. But if the men was in place, the woman, if the man was right, the woman wouldn't be. And that ain't what the Bible say. Amen. First Timothy 2 and 14 says, and Adam was what? Say it again. Adam was what? But the woman being deceived was in. She started it. So if she started in the garden, she can start it in the home. Your home is Eden. Sure, the man is responsible for the home because that's who God went to. Hey, Adam, what's up? God did not say that. <laughs> Just, Adam, Adam, <laughs> Adam, what you doing, man? What, like, what, what happened? He went to Adam because he left Adam in charge, but it wasn't Adam that messed it up. It was the woman. So even when Adam accused her, he wasn't lying. So sure, the man is responsible for the home, but Eve proved that when the leadership of the home is defied, it causes sin to enter into the head of the home. Did you hear what I just said? Eve proved that when the leadership of the home is defied, it causes sin to enter into the head of the home. God established order through Adam, but Eve chose her own desire over God's rules. This led to the man being tempted to follow her instead of God. Burn the house down. Oh, that's LeBron rocking his latest purse. Westbrook in his dress. I'm so glad we beat him. Old dude with the nails. And these other dudes are just zesty and saucy. <laughs> saucy. Just sauce. Sweet and sour sauce. <laughs> yeah, this is our men now. These, this black man now. Mark 3 and 27. No man can enter into a strong man's house and spoil his goods except he will first bind the strong man. Then he will spoil his house. Men today are effeminate and emasculated by women that want control and supremacy. So when you exonerate the woman, lift her up, when she gets strong and gets in control, the men get em emasculated. Yeah. What city has the most female millionaires? Atlanta. A city where the women are all the bosses and in control. Atlanta. What's the state of the men in Atlanta? One in three? One in three? This is why society caters to women and demonizes masculinity. When dominant, insecure, boss chicks raise boys, they destroy their masculinity, cause them to be effeminate, androgynous, and e emotionally charged, which gives us the world we are living in now. Insecure mothers that are following society's plan for them are raising up a generation of offended, entitled, lawless children that will fight against Christ when he returns. Summary! God's way is the only way to be healthy and successful as a mother. Society tries to empower deviant behaviors, appearances, and attitudes of mothers through today's media, music, etc. They promote these behaviors but never warn of the consequences. They can ready to have a BET, I forgot what it's called, and Sexy Red is performing on it. Sexy Red. She just had a baby. 
Yeah. She nasty. She raps about venereal diseases. Yeah, just filthy. Yeah. But she's on the show because they want to promote that to show young girls, if you promiscuous, don't worry about it. Famous people like that too. Uh -huh. But they never show you the consequences. They're not going to show you her doctor's bill, her clinic charges. Whatever substance she's using to even sleep at night, I'm not going to show you that. They never show you the consequences. They hide the fact that more mothers are getting chronic reproductive issues than ever before. More mothers are committing suicide than ever before. More mothers are abandoning their children than ever before. More mothers are single than ever before. More marriages are failing than ever before. More mothers are having abortions and even killing their born children than ever before. More boys are born to mothers without a male role model than ever before. These are the consequences. It's obvious that the world has lied to modern mothers and pushed an agenda on them that leads to disappointment and regret. The end result of their agenda is always loneliness, depression, anxiety, chronic illness, and regret. Don't believe the hype. Be a godly mother that puts her family over her own selfish ambitions and you will fall in love with doing it. <laughs> You'll fall in love with doing it. You will see how it leads to a better life and be rewarded by the loving legacy of your family and not the temporary accolades of the world. Amen. I still love y'all mothers. Y'all still, still love me? Okay, okay, okay. I know it was a little hard, but. First Peter 3 and 1. Likewise, wives, be subject to your own husband. So that even if some do not obey the word. Now this don't mean that they're not saved per se. They can just not obey the word in certain things. Or they could be unsaved. But even if some don't obey the word, they may be one without a word. <laughs> By the conduct of their wives. Amen. Amen. Stop correcting him with your words and correct him with your conduct. That's what I just read. Who is tight jaws in here? Let me turn back around. When they see your respectful and pure conduct, mm, respectful and pure conduct, and don't let your adorning or beauty be external. Don't worry about your body and your clothes and all of that all the time. The braiding of your hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear. So don't let that be your beauty. But let your beauty be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit. Spirit. Amen. Them sound like men claps. I ain't heard no dainty clap. That was man clap. Women just, y'all just done left me out of here, huh? They said, that's enough. That's enough. I'm in Job now. That's enough. He done bagged me all the way up. Quit worrying about the external beauty. Deal with the imperishable beauty, the beauty that never goes away. Gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is what? Now, don't you want what God deems precious? In God's sight, a gentle and quiet spirit is very precious. And men love it. Come on, men. Look, they scared. Some of them scared to clap like, hey, man. 
I'll clap later. I'll, call, I'll text you some claps. I'll text you some hands clapping. Because in here, I, ain't nothing about my wife gentle or quiet. But man, that's what men like, that gentle, quiet spirit. Oh, that's what's attractive. For this is how the holy women who hoped in God used to ordain themselves. Do you hear that? By submitting to their own husbands. As Sarah obeyed Abraham calling him Lord. And you are her children. And if you do good and do not fear anything that is frightening. Everyone stand to your feet. <laughs> Man claps. That's okay. You know, that's that's all right. That's all right. <clears throat> Man, I hope you have some great plans <laughs> for you for the mothers. They lied to you, though. That's why, that, that's why. That's why those thoughts are there. That's why those feelings are there. You just lied to. Our world has lied to us about a lot of things. And this is one of them. The order of the home. Man, you go back 40, 50, 60 years ago, you'll see much more success in home life because things were different. The way people thought was different. Now women are all on a crash course of finishing their lives without a family. I want to pray for you if you want prayer. Mothers, singles, whoever. God, I just want you to just change my mind. Fix my mind. Come on up. Whoever you are. Get, just get the world's idea out of me. That's what I want. Because we're all the victims of our past. We're all the victims of upbringings. We're all victims of whatever. But a message like this comes for deliverance. Yeah. Because if you can get past it in your mind, you're past it. God has already done the work. God has already done the work. You just got to get past it in your mind. So this message didn't come to hurt nobody's feelings. This message came to fix your feelings. Amen. Amen. That's the problem, the way, the way you feel. So I want to just line up with God's plan for motherhood. That's what I want. Whoever you are, just come on up. And I thank God for y'all. This has been a regular church. I'd have eggs, tomatoes. Everything would be on this stage. <laughs> Rolls of tissue, just anything that could be thrown. And you guys sat here and heard just things that just went against upbringings. It just went against upbringings and thoughts and mindsets. So I appreciate you being tenderhearted in this moment for what God wants for you. So all y'all just bow your heads. Father God, we just thank you, Lord, for this word, the truth of this word. We thank you, Lord God, because you are just great and mighty enough to care for our feelings. And the way we feel dictates how we act. And so as these are women, you created them to feel. You created them to feel. They're emotional. You created them with emotions so they could be sensitive to the husband, to the child, to the family. They can be sensitive, Father God, in those areas. That's what it's for. But the world has taken it, perverted it, twisted it, and made them see men, many of them, as the enemy, as competition, as somebody I got to fight against and compete with. 
And God, that is not your creation plan for us. So we pray against all worldly mindsets right now. Spirit of this world, we pray against it right now. All thoughts, all desires that are not lined up with God's plan, we cast down right now. Father God, create in all of us a clean heart. Renew a right spirit. Make our spirit new. Our spirits have been broken by this world, broken by men, broken by people that let us down, broken by disappointment, broken by hurt, whatever it is. Renew our spirit, God. Give us a fresh start with this understanding of your purpose and your plan for us. All the ladies that have come and everyone, Father God, that was touched by this message, give them what they need, Father God to be a better wife, to be a better mother, to be a future wife. Father God, give them what they need to submit, to understand, to be quiet. Give them what they need to not see competition, but see help. Give them their creation roles in the name of Jesus we pray amen 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 hallelujah well just hug somebody and say we made it through the message everything is fine amen hallelujah thank you wonderful ladies wonderful mothers and ladies and amen Deshaun, I dress like Neo just in case I had to just fly out of here. I didn't know what was going to happen after this message. <laughs>